I have watched in these past seven years being here in Africa, interviewed hundreds of people, talked to thousands of people, and I'm finding out they're cursing their own life. I have watched people die in Africa who I personally knew. I have watched people get divorced in their marriage, marriages who I personally knew. I have watched people grow sick. I have watched people lose their minds. I have watched people get scammed. I have watched people be taken advantage of. And I'm telling you all, for those who have an ear, let them hear. Hey, beautiful people. You know what to do. I've watched the failures of our brothers and sisters coming into Africa because they brought over dead spirits. I have a lot to share with people to try to help and bring people out of their own curse. I watched them come into Africa. And when I was sitting today, when I heard, and I really went through my memory bank, and I thought about those people who died. I thought about those who've been scammed. I thought about those who lost their marriages. I thought about those who had dysfunctions and hard ways to go. I found they weren't even following the most high. I found that they brought over a lot of, of, of evil spirits or old schools of thoughts and belief systems that came and disrupted their own journey. So listen close, people. You hear what he's saying. Now, Go Black is saying that uh, African Americans or, you know, maybe you come from the UK or some other places outside of Africa, you're essentially, essentially, <laughs> bringing evil spirits with you. So he's saying you're like, really, basically, he's saying you're full of the devil. And uh, he's saying that basically that you are bringing it all on yourself so if you're getting scammed if you're getting taken advantage of if you die or you know if you end up in a divorce it's your fault i'm all the way in singapore i'm, I'm dropping some gold nuggets from on high that hopefully somebody can grab a hold of this that stop cursing yourself these aren't really nuggets he's dropping. You'll see a little further in the video. He's, it's really uh, a Christian sermon. Stop cursing your children. I gotta tell people this because my thing is that we're cursing ourselves. Now, what does coming into Africa have anything to do with you cursing yourself? I'm gonna tell you why, and it's very important. It's not by chance coincident or accident. How many levels does this place have? I, I keep going down these escalators. It's not by chance coincident or accident that we um, can leave a land, leave a situation, leave a relationship, leave a job, leave a... Uh, uh, different situations and things in life. You wonder why when we get to the new place, it's probably worse than where we were before. Now, I can agree with him to an extent as far as uh, cursing yourself because uh, I used to wonder why black people were cursed because, you know, they always say, oh, being black is a curse, being black is a curse. But is it? Is being black a curse? And I thought about it and a lot of things that happened to us and a lot of it is, like he said, you know, you, you do bring it on yourself. I mean, it started way, way back when the African chiefs uh, sold other Africans to the Europeans and they have been suffering behind that ever since. And they met something, you know, evil uh, for us descendants, you know, or as our, our ancestors. 
you know so they meant something evil for our ancestors and uh they end up cursing themselves so a lot of it is uh i i, I think it is like self-induced to some extent but um it's just like anything if you go somewhere else and you're having like problems in your marriage they are going to be worse if you go to some place like africa especially because you're going to be suffering behind other things, you know, like the uh, transportation, lack of infrastructure, you know, lack of medical care. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many things, you know, the electricity going out, you know, every other day or every other hour. So there are a lot of things that will exacerbate, you know, problems if you're having them. So I can agree with him on that one. And uh, but you'll see where he's going with this in a little bit. How does that happen? It's because you are the usher of those spirits that you've taken along that caused havoc in your life. We are going to have to get to a place to be honest. When are we going to grow up and really do a self-assessment, truly, for us to tear down the curses that are killing us? Not just killing us spiritually, because many of you all don't under even stand that the spirit is alive and well. But when your spirit ain't well, every touch is a headache, struggle. It withers. It never gets anywhere. And you always stay at even kill. He's saying you're standing in your own way. And I, I think as a collective, uh, black people are standing in their own way. You know, we don't even, we can't even, uh, we don't even know who we are. You know, we, we can't come to a consensus on our identity. So we can't unite and thus we'll always, you know, be under the thumb of others because they know exactly who they are. They know who we are too, by the way. How is that? Don't want people want to be successful as money. They don't want to be successful in themselves in honesty, integrity, standing upright, being a person of your word, having a little dignity and self-esteem about oneself. Where, the, where has it all gone? It's gone out into the garbage. Yeah, he's kind of right, though. You know, a lot of cheaters, dealers, liars, and killers and stuff out there. Amongst the blacks, so uh, so yeah. I mean, all of us could uh, stand to look in the mirror and make a change, but nobody wants to make a change. And then we wonder why we suffer. So these people who's coming to Africa, people who's coming into the Africa, and I'm gonna tell you this right here because there is a call. Many people think it's all just a lie. Oh, he's talking about this so-called creator and. You know, the call for those to flee from out of the place of wickedness. He's that lost his mind and all that right there. Okay, you can say I lost my mind. You can say that. Uh, okay. I won't even say, okay, I lost my mind. But you can't take away the fact that when you see who's come into Africa who claims they were sent by the Most High, and these people are dropping off like flies. There's got to be something to that. All right. Uh, I can agree, uh, again, with, with some of this, but not all of this, because uh, let's say I'm an alcoholic, <laughs> which I'm not. But let's say I'm like, um, I am an alcoholic and I go with it to Africa. You know, so I'll probably still be an alcoholic in Africa, but, uh, you know, so I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what his point is here. You know, I mean, I know he's saying, you know, we need to straighten up, straighten up and fly right. But, um, even if I'm an alcoholic and I'm in Africa, I don't know if that means I deserve to be scammed, taken advantage of, or die, you know? So, um. So I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't under, well, I understand what he's saying, but um, I think that he's kind of missing the mark a little bit because 
if you go to Africa, you will definitely be scammed, taken advantage of. You might, you may lose your life if you have something someone wants. And uh, I don't think that has anything to do with whether you, because he's going to say it's because, you know, you're not, you're not living right or what have you, or um, you can, you cannot be doing any of those things, you know, lying, cheating, stealing, or sleeping around or whatever scenarios he has um you can still get taken advantage of i mean you are a target when you get over there to africa if you have any money on you you know then you're you're a target so i don't i don't know because the ones that i do know are walking faithfully now i don't know what goes on in any man's house i know that so you're absolutely right i know what y'all saying you don't know what goes on in any man's house i know that but I do have a thing that's called discerning of spirit. He don't have no discerning of spirits because there's a whole bunch of people faking like they're, you know, they're so they're so good and perfect. And the, the main people in my experience who uh, are doing the most are the ones who walking around with their Bibles or at work. They get all this uh, religious paraphernalia tacked up inside their cubicle. There's not even no space for nothing else. And uh, those are the ones, you know, those are the ones, though. He need to take a closer look at these ones who so-called, you know, uh, live in the right life. That are those who are having a conscious effort into right, walking upright in the most high. I see a total different result in them than those who come in with other agendas or backgrounds, beliefs and perceptions and views. I'm seeing this whole thing unfold, and I'm giving the the warning. And he's talking about giving the warning, but I'm just like, I mean, the things he's saying about uh, the diaspora, you know, going into Africa. You know, you can say the things, same thing about Africans, you know, leaving the continent and going to other places. You know, I mean, that that applies to anyone and everyone. You know, the, the Europeans as well. So, um, I don't know. Oh, he's, he, he, he's, he's making a claim for, you know, for just, you know, there's, there's bad actors all around, all around, you know, there's going to be bad actors in Africa. There's going to be bad actors going to Africa. And, uh, so, but anyway, I'm giving the warning. Africa's a death sentence for some. If you're sick in the mind and you think or spiritual, if you're sick in your spirit and you think you can come to Africa and it's going to change your marriage, it's going to change who you are, and you think you're only that, that the area, the space, the place is going to change you instead of you seeking the most high for the change, you become sick. Because you quit, or other words, remove yourself from a toxic situation, but the toxicity was already in place. All right. There's no more toxic place than Africa. So if you're toxic, yes, you're gonna it's gonna be even more toxic <laughs> once you get over there and your elect electricity cut off on you, you know, while you're watching your favorite show or you're cooking your favorite meal or you know, you enjoy your air conditioning and, you know, all of a sudden there's no more. So uh, definitely, definitely, I agree. Uh, whatever you got going on, it pro it's probably going to increase tenfold, but that's any place you go. I mean, you can go to Paris or, um, I don't know, UK or Cancun or wherever. And uh, if you're a toxic person, of course, you're going to be toxic there. That's not going to change. So I'm not even sure why he's saying this because most people I meet aren't trying to change anyway. <laughs> They're happy with their de degeneracy or whatever they got going on that's not cool. And they're not trying to change. So I'm not, you know, and, and of course, Africa is the last place you should go for any type of healing. I mean, they need healing. How, how are you going to heal over there? So this guy. That when you left to go to another place, you got sicker. Now, some people are going to say, well, hold up. I don't get what you're saying right there. 
Huh? It's in scripture. Think about this right here. Scripture scrolls, ancient writings say this right here. There was a guy. There was a man who had demons. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord removed the demons. The demons went out, right? And it was said to him, don't go sin no more. Sin no more. So the man, he wanders about. And it says that his house was clean. But he went back to, or I'm going to say went back to. The demons came back and found that it was an empty house. In other words, there was no change. That it still was conducive for a spirit to dwell within once within you and house itself. But it says that that demon brought back seven more. It so Go Black is saying that when you arrive in Africa, you already got about five demons inside. <laughs> but, you know, once all the demons in Africa, you know, see that, you know, you already, you know, full of demons, they're going to be like, hey, come on, guys. And uh, you're going to get like seven or eight more demons, you know. So uh, so he he really saying you just, you, you know, y'all devils, y'all full of, you know, y'all just. Y'all just a bunch of demons, uh, you know, coming over there to Africa, you know, uh, to, I guess, wreak havoc. You smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, use drugs, have a bad, nasty dispensation and character. If you're a backbiter, if you're out here just laying with anyone, how many things each one of those that I named, just one of them, just take one or whatever, does it bring on more than one issue? When you, you like to be out in the streets sleeping with a lot of women on it, right? What are some things that can happen to you? Well, it depends on who you are, male or female, right? Let's just say you're a female. We know you can catch diseases. See, and this, this was another thing I had with him because in all his examples in this video, he's always he's picking on the women when we know nobody's out there sleeping around with everyone, you know, more than men or, or doing any of that stuff, drinking, crack, you know, whatever. So I don't know. So I think he got some some uh, issues, some on the on the low with, with women because he, you know, all his examples are. You know, if you're a woman and you're doing it, you're just like, nah. You can have a baby. You can uh, have an, a, a spiritual tie, meaning that, as they say today, body count, but yet have connected with that person that you had laid with and brought on very different spirits that will ride with you until you can clean them out. This is why many people can't get rid of old lovers, love affairs, because it becomes a familiar, it's called a familiar spirit that attaches itself to you. Many spirits can attach itself to you. So in other words, we sit back and we curse ourselves by the acts that we do and thinking that we can rid it by removing ourselves into different atmospheres, different relationships. And, and all you did was carry that same mess over into another relationship, another job, another place, another environment, and all that. You know, I was telling a young man who was trying to, uh, you know, get away from drugs and he and how he should just, you know, go the pro See, a young man. A way of getting rid of drugs. And he thinks that going into a different place will be best for him. And I said, it's important. That's an important step. But that right there is not what's going to keep you from using drugs. It's you. Because guess what? When you go to a new place, and I've seen people do it over and over again, like myself when I used to have an issue drinking alcohol, and I got stationed into another place, what did I do? I found the people who drink and hang out at bars and clubs. And what did that do? It brought the same... Yeah, he's killing me. Bars, clubs. Like, it's, like those are the most disgusting places on the earth. <laughs> in my life 
And I found that those people that I drew to who did such a thing, they didn't, they weren't achieving what it was that I uh, found out later I should be achieving. It wasn't until I changed out my mindset, the people I hung around, the people, the things I was doing, stop the drinking, put the, put that down. Now what are you going to put the, the, uh, a new spirit towards? But we don't realize we curse ourselves. We're cursing our lives. We don't understand that our actions are killing us. And I'm watching it unfold time and time again. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this lightly. I claim to be any title of my freaking name. I don't claim to be some religious guru or prophet or I don't even try to give myself those. What I will share is the knowledge that I have gained. And the knowledge that I have gained, I'm telling you, many are going to suffer so they get their act together. You can keep doing what you want to do. And as you start to, as you begin to even fall further in a spiral, and many of you all can attest to the fact that when you continue in your own folly, your own ignorance, you get those results back. It is not until one can at least repent. And repent means nothing but one who can recognize. The Bible babble. That's what it's about, guys. He's, he's, uh, he's promoting the Christian religion here. And, uh, but he's trying to pretend like he's not. The errors of their way. And then get back on the right track. Walking towards or walking in perfection. Let me say this right here to many of you people. These people, they want to talk about, you're not perfect, you're not perfect. I'm perfect in Christ. Christ, the spirit of the most high. I am perfect in that. People are afraid to say that they're perfect. Don't let the world tell you you're not perfect. I'm perfect. I'm perfect in the spirit. In this flesh, no. You can't be perfect in the spirit and then imperfect in the flesh at the same time. It's like contradictory. Sin, I've done horrible things. It's to be uh, all the wicked, evil things that one could say. But while I'm walking in the spirit, I'm perfect. Okay, so that's it, guys. Thank you for being here and supporting this channel. By taking time to watch this video, I'm Lexi. Welcome. And I also welcome your comments. What do you think about Go Black? Is he losing his mind? Do you think he's trying to, you know, spread religious propaganda? Or he's trying to indoctrinate people into the Christian religion? Because uh, that's what it sounded like to me. You know, he said Christ. He was quoting the Bible, supposedly the sacred scrolls and uh, all sorts of things. So, you know, it's really it was a sermon uh, that he was giving to us, basically saying, hey, you guys are, a bunch, you know, you're carrying around a bunch of demons and devils in you. And when you go to Africa, because you're such a bad person, you're going to invite more demons in. So what you think, guys? Thanks for watching.